Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel and happy Chinese New Year to everybody. This is going to be the review for the Elephone U Pro smartphone. I have a lot of thoughts about the smartphone, both good and bad. I'm also running a giveaway as well. So after you finish watching this video, I highly recommend you click on the link in the description down below. Entering this giveaway is easy. It takes five seconds and it's free. If you guys remember, I was super hyped for the Elephone U Pro. I even created a couple of videos and a giveaway as well. That was how hyped I was for this phone because I always thought this was going to be my perfect phone. It's got everything I want in a phone. It's got stock Android, it's got a Snapdragon 660 and a 3500 milliamp hour battery, which will theoretically fulfill my battery needs. And I thought, you know what, this is going to be my phone for me. I'm going to be using this for a long, long time. But sadly, that isn't the case. And I'm here to tell you why. So let's start with the build quality of the Elephone U Pro. This phone is made of glass on the back, glass on the front, and it has a metal band running around it. So it's gonna be fairly resistant when you drop it on the side like this. So if you do drop it, you're probably not gonna shatter it, but, it, but if you drop it face down or face up, then you're definitely gonna shatter the screen on the top and the bottom. Yes, it's gonna be Gorilla Glass 5 and Gorilla Glass 4 on the back. So it's gonna be pretty scratch resistant. But no matter how hard you make Gorilla Glass, it's still going to be shatter prone. So that is something you have to be aware of. If you do not like glass phones, you don't actually have many options with regards to Snapdragon 660 phones. You've got a couple of Oppo phones that are metal that you can choose from. But if you want a Snapdragon 660 phone, I actually ran a comparison between three Snapdragon 660 phones. The Elephone U Pro, the Xiaomi Mi Note 3, as well as the Smartisan Nut Pro 2. And all three of these are glass phones, which is really unfortunate because... Yes, they look nice when they're new, but first of all, they attract fingerprints on the back and they are very easy to smash as well, even if you have a case on. If you have a case on, sometimes you can even smash the phone if you drop it hard enough. Now, a couple of other things to talk about. This phone does not have a headphone jack. It only has USB-C. So that is the one downside that I think some people will take issue with, but I personally don't because I'm a full Bluetooth guy now, so I don't ever use headphone jacks ever. The next thing to be aware of is the bezels around the screen are actually very tiny. And this is probably the best looking China phone I've used in a long time. So first of all, you got the top and the bottom bezels. Those are very nice and small. And you also have very nice curved edges, if you can see, that really make this phone look very close to a Samsung Galaxy S8. When I took this out in front of my colleagues, they were like, oh, look, you got an S8. And I'm like, no, this is an Elephone U Pro. And then they were like, what's Elephone? Yeah, this is honestly a beautiful phone and like huge props to Elephone for making such a nice looking phone. Well, so let's talk a little bit about the display on the Elephone U Pro. This phone has an AMOLED display. So honestly, I love AMOLED displays, very saturated, very nice. However, out of the box, this AMOLED display looked very, very yellow, and it really actually looked not too good for an AMOLED display. However, I went into the settings and I turned the color temperature over to a cooler color temperature, and now this is a very, very nice looking screen. You don't get that really weird yellow tinge anymore. And honestly, I really think Elephone did a good job with the display. It's a flexible AMOLED display from BOE, so it does look very nice. Color saturation is obviously superb because it's AMOLED. Blacks are awesome, whites are awesome. It's also pretty bright as well, so you can see it in sunlight. And stuff just looks so crisp and clear on the screen as well. I have absolutely no complaints about the screen. I think it's a very good screen. It's not the best screen. I actually think the OnePlus 5's AMOLED display is actually better than this. And obviously the Samsung Galaxy S8's display is a step above this and the OnePlus 5's as well. But that being said, this is a great display that no one will have complaints with. Now let's talk about the speaker. There is a bottom firing speaker and honestly, this is not a very good speaker, especially when you consider the price. The speaker here is kind of tinny. Um, it doesn't have a lot of bass, doesn't have a lot of body to the volume, unlike the Smartisan Nut Pro 2 that I just received and I made a video of as well, comparing it to this phone. And I really think that this speaker here is adequate for most users, but it's not gonna be the best. The Smartisan Nut Pro 2 was just crazy good. The Xiaomi Mi Note 3, which is a competitor again to this phone, has better speakers as well than this phone and it has a little bit more bass. This phone doesn't have a lot of bass. So that is one thing that we're, you're gonna have to contend with if you want this phone. That being said, I don't think many people will take issue with the audio here. It's just not as good as one of the best speakers in the market. The war is coming. I'll be ready, bro. This ends today. Black Panther. 
Now let's talk about battery life on this phone. The Snapdragon 660 combined with a 3500 milliamp hour battery. Now that is actually a very good combination that theoretically provides amazing battery life. And you know what? This phone's battery life is actually pretty good. I was able to get around eight hours of screen on time pretty easily on this phone. However, if you compare this to other Snapdragon 660 phones like the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 as well as the Smart as a Nut Pro 2, those phones get at least an hour or two hours more battery life than this phone. And theoretically, this phone should get the best battery life because an AMOLED display is the most power saving display out of all of the displays out there because you can just turn off the pixels when it's black. So that really means that Elephone has a ton of work to do on battery optimization because if they can get that battery optimization up to par with these other phones, the battery here could be even better than those. So again, if Elephone can improve the software optimization on the Elephone U Pro, this is going to be a great battery life. It's already good, but it could be better. All right, so now let's talk software on the Elephone U Pro. So the software here is completely stock Android, very nice. The stock launcher also has a very nice swipe up gesture and swipe left for Google Now, which is something I'm looking for in pretty much every phone I get. The Xiaomi Mi Note 3 didn't have it. The Smart as a Nut Pro 2 didn't have it. Xiaomi Mi 6 didn't have it. A lot of phones don't have it. Even the Lenovo P2 with stock Android does not have swipe left for Google Now, which is something that is actually very rare on these Chinese phones and pretty much phones in general. So I'm actually very surprised that Allophone has included such thought into their launcher that they've included both a swipe up as well as a swipe left for Google Now. And now they've also replaced the navigation bar with a pretty cool swipe up for the navigation bar. So for example, I can hit back from the left, I can hit home from the bottom, and I can go to multitasking from the right. Now, do I like this? I think it's pretty innovative, this uh, swipe up gesture. But the thing is, I don't like it that much. I still prefer regular buttons over a swipe up gesture because it's just more versatile and there's less problems uh, when you're using it because a gesture can be mistaken for other things in apps. Like for example, you scroll by mistake, which can get annoying sometimes. That being said, it's nice to have that option there. Now let's talk about multitasking. This thing has six gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 660. Everything's pretty fast. To be surprised, it's actually not as fast as a Xiaomi Mi Note 3. Again, software optimization. Elephone still got a ton of work to do to bring this up to par with the other phones. And I really think that Elephone can do it because they have done it before. And this is a Snapdragon 660. It's got a ton of power. Just let's just take advantage of that power and make the phone as fast as possible. Now, before we move on to gaming, I wanna talk a little bit about the uh, bugs that I encountered on this phone. Not a lot of bugs, but I did encounter one huge bug. For example, sometimes when I'm just doing stuff, suddenly the phone will freeze and the phone, like everything below the notification bar goes black and you cannot interact with the screen at all. You can swipe down, but you cannot actually tap on anything and nothing actually works, which is a little bit weird. And then you have two options. Either you restart the phone or you wait for like 10 minutes and then the black thing goes away and then you can start using your phone as normal. This happened quite a few times. It happened, I think, at least twice a day. And to be honest, it's actually very annoying. Um, sometimes I'll be opening maps and then I'm trying to look at the traffic and then this thing just shuts down. It just like goes black and I'm kind of like, what am I supposed to do now? This thing's black, I can't look at the traffic. I guess I'll just sit in a traffic jam for an extra two hours. Thanks a lot, Elephone. So yeah, hopefully Elephone fixes that ASAP. Now in terms of gaming, this Elephone U Pro can play pretty much any game you want. Lots of power, lots of performance, even when I'm recording the screen at the same time. So absolutely no problem. You wanna play any game, you got it on the Elephone U Pro. So let's talk about the fingerprint sensor. So the fingerprint is located on the back and honestly, it's not that great at all. The placement is actually okay. The indentation is also okay. You can mistake it for the camera sometimes, but that's not the main issue. The main issue here is the speed of the fingerprint sensor. When you tap on the fingerprint sensor like this, one, two, three, bang. See how slow that was? That took like one whole second for it to uh, activate. And not only that, I think there's an even bigger problem. If you don't tap the fingerprint sensor hard enough, the fingerprint sensor does not activate, which is actually really annoying because if you tap it lightly like this, nothing actually happens. You have to like tap and hold your finger there for it to work, which is actually really annoying. Now there's also face unlock, which actually works pretty well, but it's not that fast. So if I do this and I do that, it'll unlock in the, you know, it's okay, but it's not as fast as the Mi Note 3 and not as smart as the Nut Pro 2 either. So again, this is mostly software issues. Again, it could be the hardware for the fingerprint sensor. You just have to increase the sensitivity for the fingerprint sensor so you don't have to like tap and hold in order for the fingerprint sensor to actually activate. In terms of speed, elephone has got a ways to go in both the fingerprint sensor as well as the face unlock to bring it up to par with these other competitors that it's competing with. Now, the biggest problem I see with the Elephone U Pro are the network bands located in this phone. If you live in the US or Canada, don't buy this phone because it's not gonna work. If you live in Canada, you theoretically are able to get uh, 4G LTE. You, you don't get 2G or 3G though. 
However, every time I turned off Wi-Fi, it switched from 4G back to 2G. So I could never actually get 4G connectivity on this phone. Now, if you live in the USA, that's going to be even worse. You're not going to get 2G, 3G, or 4G, which is going to be really annoying. Now, that's a huge problem for this phone because it's marketed not only to people in Europe, but it's marketed as a worldwide phone. And if you don't include North America, yes, the market here is big, but it's not as big as Europe or you know Asia. That's still not worldwide. That being said, if you live anywhere else in the world that's not US or Canada, you most likely will be able to get this to work on your carrier. So again, North Americans, you should not get this phone just because it will not work on pretty much any carrier in North America, which is very sad because I really do like this phone and I stock Android as well. So let's talk about Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. The Wi-Fi here is actually slightly worse than what you get on the Mi Note 3, which is okay. Um, it, the Mi Note 3 already had great Wi-Fi, so I don't think Wi-Fi is gonna be an issue here. Bluetooth works fine. GPS here is actually pretty good. So I was able to get a lock fast. I was able to navigate through traffic, absolutely no problem. There's no data, obviously, on this phone, at least in Canada, but the GPS here is pretty good. Now I wanna talk about the camera software on this phone. Allophone cooperated with a company called ArcSoft to optimize the uh, dual lens setup on the back. Now, I have to say that they didn't do a complete job, but they did a pretty good job for a first try. So in terms of camera quality, this phone can actually take very good photos. But the problem with this is that it's not consistent. So sometimes it'll take the great photos and sometimes it'll take really bad photos. So the great photos on one hand look absolutely amazing. Great detail, great color, you know, and when you turn on bokeh, it looks absolutely amazing. You know, everything about the photo just makes it look so awesome. And it actually can match the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 in terms of some photos that it takes, the good ones at least. Now, when you get into situations where you don't take those great photos, you take maybe subpar photos, the quality on those photos is not as good, obviously. But those pictures are still not bad, but they're just not up to par to what you would expect from a $400 Snapdragon 660 phone. The photos can look drab, they can look really boring, and sometimes the details are actually not all there. So those are some of the issues that Elephone faces when they're trying to optimize for the Elephone U Pro for the camera part at least. And we're, let's talk about the bokeh mode a little bit. The bokeh mode here actually works very well some of the times. It's kind of the same thing as the uh, camera. Some of the times it takes absolutely amazing photos. It looks so good, so clean. The uh, delineation between the foreground and the background is crisp and clear. Sometimes it'll like blur out part of the foreground, which is actually really annoying. And so in that case, I do think that Elephone still has more work to do with the software for the Elephone U Pro. So whenever they release the second version of this phone, the Elephone U Pro 2, I think that is where they have the potential to make this into a great dual camera setup. The front facing camera is okay, it's not bad, but there's really nothing to talk about the front camera that's of note. So you can take up to 4K video with the video quality. And I have to say that the 4K video quality is actually not bad, but to be honest, it's about on par with a Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 or a Redmi 5 Plus in terms of 4K crispiness. The color reproduction is actually pretty decent, but the detail you get from this Elephone U Pro for 4K is not up there with the best phones. For example, the Mi Note 3, that's really unfair because the Mi Note 3 was ranked higher than the iPhone 8 by DxO Mark. It doesn't rank up with the Smartness and Nut Pro 2 in terms of quality either uh, for the video quality. So again, I think they can make the video quality better, but I just think they need some work. Low light performance on this phone is horrible. So I was expecting them to improve a little bit because they're using you know, better quality cameras, better quality CPU, better quality ISPs. But the problem is that the low light quality on these photos are actually almost on par with their old MediaTek phones, which is actually really sad. So I really don't know what Elephone is doing. I think they probably focus too much on all the bokeh mode, great lighting conditions that they kind of forgot about low light mode. So low light mode here is horrible. Elephone, you gotta improve this or this is gonna be a pretty bad camera. So, conclusions for the Elephone U Pro. There's so much I like about the Elephone U Pro and honestly, a lot of stuff I dislike as well. So let's go through the stuff I like first. So I like that it's stock Android and I think many of you guys will like that as well, stock Android. There's not a lot of phones out there that are stock Android, like a lot of good phones like the Mi Note 3, not stock Android, Smart as a Nut Pro 2, not stock Android, Elephone U Pro standing on its own in this case. Now, second thing I like about this, specs. You got the Snapdragon 660, you got a 3500 milliamp hour battery, you get pretty decent battery life here. You don't get great battery life with the uh, Elephone U Pro, but you get good enough battery life. And I do think that Elephone can improve the software to a point where it gets to a Mi Note 3 level of battery life or a Smart as a Nut Pro 2 level of battery life, you know, an extra hour or two of SOT here and there. So hopefully Elephone can improve on that. Oh, and I wanna talk about three things as well that I completely forgot to talk about. It has NFC, which works. It has wireless charging, which works. And it also has a notification light. They claim that the notification light is over here, but I've actually never seen this notification light light up. 
before. Even when I'm doing this in a dark room, you can't actually see this thing light up. So I think the notification light is on the front and this is just a logo on the back. But when the thing that really sets this phone apart is how it looks, it looks absolutely amazing. Just look at this phone, right? People think it's a Galaxy S8 and that's not a bad thing considering the Galaxy S8 is a very beautiful looking phone as well. You've got really thin top and bottom bezels. You've got super skinny side bezels and you've got nice curves on both sides as well. Absolutely amazing. And I really think Elephone has stepped their aesthetic game up and I hope they continue this way for all of their phones and not just their Snapdragon 660 phones, but any other old MediaTek phone they might release in the future, do it like this. This is awesome. Now moving on to the things that I don't like. So the audio is the one thing I don't like, but that's not too big of an issue because audio is never really as important in the phone as other aspects of the phone. The battery could be improved. I don't like how this is glass in the front and the back. The software is buggy. Sometimes it'll crash on me and just be unresponsive for like four or five minutes straight. The fingerprint sensor on the back is really slow and the face unlock is not that fast either. Now, the biggest thing that prevents me from using this phone as a daily driver would be the network band. Because I live in Canada, the network bands here prevent it from being fully compatible with the LFO U Pro. And if you live in the USA, that's even worse. So we at North Americans should not get this. You should consider the Mi Note 3 or the Smartisan Nut Pro 2. The Elephone U Pro is a no-go, unfortunately, for all of us North Americans. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the camera quality. It can take some amazing photos, but Elephone also needs to work on improving the consistency of their photos and not only the um, great looking daylight photos, but the nighttime photos, the front facing camera and improve the quality of their video as well. With all that being said, the Elephone U Pro is a great first try by Elephone for a Snapdragon phone, as high-end Snapdragon phone, because as someone corrected me, this Elephone Trunks was the first Snapdragon phone to ever be released by Elephone. And I think they did a great first stab at this. They got to stab this thing a couple more times to make it better. So we'll have to see what they come up with and what kind of bug fixes they come up with this, and we'll see if they improve. Again, be sure to enter the giveaway, which is linked in the description down below. It's easy to enter, it takes five seconds, and it's free. Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy Chinese New Year, and I'll see you guys in the next one.